Welcome back. This is part two of the importing Revit into Unity 3D tutorial. I'm going to go and assign some grass and the driveway. Um, one thing that's interesting is that this is on a demo layer in Revit. Now, there's some really powerful things you can do with that. The fact that it keeps things that are on a demo layer. I think when I exported it from Revit, I did not hide from view. I think I actually, the, the view properties had uh, been set for demo and new. So it actually shows the demo and new. Now what you could do in a, in a more complex uh, uh, application of Unity, uh, uh, use of Unity, is you could actually export both models and then have a button within Unity that will switch between them so you can see what it looks like before and after. Uh, but again, that's a little outside of the bounds of this demo. Um, let's see, so we've got yeah, so that's going to be just a gypsum. We're going to skip that for now. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's good enough for now. You get the idea. Um, I've already got quite a few of the materials just by selecting a few. Um, and you can see the model is starting to shape up. Now, let's also um, add a little bit more lighting. Game object, create other. Let's do a point light and bring that over here. Oops. If you have trouble selecting things in in there, you in in the scene, you can actually go over here in hierarchy and get better selections. Like I'll grab this point light, hit F, and that'll focus on that. And now I can bring by hitting the W key again, that'll bring the move um, uh, axis up, so I can move this around. Let's put a light up here, um, put a light over here. It's really cool uh, to play with this lighting right within Unity because it's so dynamic. Uh, and um, it's kind of fun. So let's just get a little bit of dynamic light in here, move this around. Now, one thing that you can do if you have the pro version of Unity um, is, let's see, I'm going to do one thing. You have to change in player to deferred lighting. Um, but if you click on the point light, if you're in the pro version, then the pro version and the standard version are, are the same. Um, it's just some features are unlocked in the pro version. I happen to be running the pro version so I can show you a preview, but you can click sh soft shadows and now I have shadows which is really, really fun to play with. And you can do some pretty amazing things. And then from there, you can actually go to Window Light Mapping, and you can um, map those lights to the actual textures so it won't um, require your browser to process it when you're walking through, which means you'll get very high, um, much higher frame rates because your uh, browser isn't calculating every, si every single time the light hits the every one of the materials it has to do uh, what they call a draw call. Uh, I'm, I realize I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but uh, if you've been into this for a while, that might be useful useful information. But I mean, look at how that, that the shadows are, are dynamic. Uh, so there's, there's all kinds of fun you can have with that. Um, but again, you don't need to. It can still be pretty, um, pretty interesting and uh, high fidelity without those shadows. So let's just turn the shadows off for now. Um, another thing you can do is go to Edit, Render Settings, and Skybox Material, and go ahead and find, there's uh, we've got Overcast Sky, we've got Sunny Skies. Um, again, we brought these in in the beginning. When we choose which assets to bring in with Unity, uh, we picked those. So there we have it. Um, again, let's try it out by clicking Play. It'll go Maximize on screen, and here we go. Here's the model. Uh, in Unity. Again, it's a very, very crude model. I've got some overlapping um, uh, materials there that are causing a little bit of an issue, but yeah, you can see I had some materials in there. It looks like my floor, my walls from my basement are picking through, uh, are peeking through the, the floor there, so I would have to go back. Well, in fact, let's, um, let's do that. Let's go back to, um, let's get in here, line up the camera and see that. Let's go back to Revit, and let's go to our section, and let's see what's going on with that with that uh, with that floor. So here it is. Let's go to Element Property, or yeah, View Properties. Yeah, it's down seven inches. 
Let's hit OK. Now, let's go back to the 3D view, File, Export, FBX, and let's put that right over the top of Main Model, and again, it'll overwrite it. Take a little while to do. Sometimes it will it will have to re-import the materials, which can be somewhat time-consuming and frustrating. Uh, I don't know why. Yeah, it's doing that again. Um, I, I still have never figured out why or how to avoid that from happening, um, but it'll just have to go through the materials again and uh, bring those in. Yeah, there, there might be something I can do in the FBX settings when I export it. I have a dialog box that comes up that has options. Uh, maybe there's something with not um, not bring, not assigning, not, F, not exporting the materials again, and then Unity won't think that they're, that they're f uh, new. So there you have it. It changes it in, inside of Unity. We no longer have that issue with the floors. So that's pretty cool, right? You can go back to Revit and you can change things right within your uh, Revit model and come back in here and see those changes. And obviously this model needs a lot of work yet uh, in Revit. Um, I would need to add a front walkway and um, all kinds of other detail. Uh, but um, that's it. You've got the model in here. Now, in order to get this out to a website, I'm going to go ahead and save uh, this scene. I'm going to call it um, Arch Tutorial. And it created that scene. And now if I go to File, uh, Build Settings, you will see a dialog box that comes up with Build Settings. We're going to do a web player. You can see here there's a PC and Mac standalone, which will basically create an application, uh, like a .exe file that uh, you can uh, install on different computers. You can go to iOS, which means you can um, create... Um, uh, applic er, uh, uh, iPhone uh, or iPad applications. You can go to Android. Um, that requires a separate license, as does Xbox, PlayStation 3, or Nintendo Wii. Um, but those options are there if you happen to have a really um, compelling reason to do that with architectural visualization. Maybe you're um, doing a community project and you know you you could uh, I don't know put it out to a Nintendo Wii and and uh, have it uh, members of the community explore the design on a Nintendo to have some fun with it or something like that. Um, but let's see, let's go to web player and uh, we're just going to leave these unchecked for now and go to build and we're going to find that location, Arch Tutorial, and I'm going to put it right in, um, I'm going to put it right in here, Web Player, let's call it um, Web Build, and select that folder. It will compile those scripts and it will build those uh, levels into there. And what I'm going to do now in the meantime, I'm going to open up my FTP software. I happen to use Core FTP. There's a million ways to do this. Um, I'm going to go into uh, one of my uh, hosted sites. You can see Unity just wrapped up um, that and, and gave me this window which has that location. And it gives you two different files. Uh, it gives you an HTML file and a Unity 3D file. You need to make sure that you put both of these together wherever it is that you're going to host them on a website. And so I'm going to browse to where I have that to Arch Virtual, Web Build, and Web Player. Um, and within my uh, FTP, I'm just going to go ahead and put that over there as Web Player. So now, um, that will be the URL for, in my case, is crescendodesign.com, uh, Web Player slash Let's see, what is it going in as? Uh, web player slash um, web player. Again, you can change these to anything you'd like. Dot HTML. And click OK and or enter, and, and here we go. Unity loads it, um, and here it is. Here's the model inside a browser. It's pretty small, um, the window is, as default, but you can go into... Um, 
the HTML file and change the size and actually have it quite a bit bigger. You could even go full screen. Uh, and again, if you published it out to a standalone application um, and you didn't want it in a browser, uh, then you can um, obviously have that full screen as well. Uh, and even then, uh, in, in the standalone, you can also choose um, the quality settings that you'd like if you want it to be uh, good, fantastic, beautiful, uh, the different versions of, of quality control that you have. Um, you can also do that for the web, the web browser as well within Unity, within the Unity editor. So there it is. It's in a browser. Um, there's a couple of things that I'll add at the, to conclude that the doors obviously uh, are closed and they're colliders. So what you could do is open those doors um, in Revit so that they're not in the way and um, import those. Also, um, you only have one uh, lighting option and um, one of the things that would be nice to do would be to actually um, get away from this first person controller and being able to kind of orbit around the design. Um, so one thing we've done is we've packaged uh, a couple of prefab uh, resources along with some documentation explaining how to do that um, and we put it into what we call the architectural beginners kit uh, and you can find that at artvir archvirtual.com um, and uh, one of the most recent one of the posts if you just search for architectural beginners kit um, you'll find that and from there you can purchase it's forty five dollars uh, I've got a preview build uh, on that site that shows you kind of what is included so for example there's a hinged door uh, you walk up to it the door opens you walk away from it and the door closes um, there's also a sliding door you could have that automatically slides. It just detects when someone walks up to it. And another neat thing that we included is a material changer so that you could actually have walls you walk up to and I'm just clicking my mouse and it'll cycle through a couple of different predefined textures that you can control, um, which can be kind of fun, you know, for a client to be able to go through a design and kind of choose, you know, let's say they like this wooden slat material you could change the whole design to be nothing but that uh, and then kind of walk away and take a look at what it looks like um, so that's kind of fun to be able to offer that um, customization I mean you could imagine like a living room you could have a variety of different um, paint colors to choose from and the client can just go through and pick um, the different you know or even exterior cladding options on a commercial building and, and enable them to do that. Uh, the other thing that we have here is a click and orbit camera um, which is right up here in the menu. If I click and orbit that and see I can get out here and it kind of helps for architectural visualization to be able to see the design from a distance and be able to cam around it uh, and take a look at the model from all different views. Um, we also have a lights where you can have uh, different lighting setups um, in this case, it's just uh, switches between um, a night and a day, or turns artificial lights on and off. Um, so that's kind of kind of a useful feature, depending on what you're uh, what you're trying to achieve. So you can get these all set up um, when you download the package. Um, it'll give you those all as prefab setups. So you just drag and drop them into your scene, uh, and it also has detailed um, documentation tutorials showing you how to set those things up. Um, I know it can be somewhat time consuming to figure that out on your own if you're, if you're new to Unity, so hopefully this will uh, speed things up for you. Alright, well I hope that was helpful. Um, I'm hoping to um, have a few more tutorials in the future that will get into a little bit more detail uh, and show you how to include some more advanced features, but uh, that's it for now. Thanks and enjoy. <laughs>